Okay, so here's a tutorial on tagging dollar signs within the string. This one's actually going to be a little complicated, so you want to, you know, pay attention. Now, first we want to define our string. Let's go to the bottom. Let's make this bigger. Let's say 300. Define bytes. Yo, dog. Now, if we just like mob a h your two mob a l thirty three and twenty one and twenty now this code is just going to display character whoops not clear that was from the last tutorial test dot asm um now it's clear that the file still name so you're just going to print the two character and go away let's rename this from clear to test so um I just did that to make sure the code didn't give us any errors before we started coding now now if we move into mob a809 mob dx 200 and 21 as you know since there's no dollar sign at the end when we run test it's going to give us all that now you may notice all these characters if you go to start run your web browser ASCII.cl all these characters don't seem to exist on this list and the reason is they don't seem to exist on the list because all their values are somewhere below 20 which means they're all these weird SOH or DC4 things which you may not understand these but some of these aren't that complicated like LF is your line feed that's like going to the next line which is when we use 0A then like bell usually in like batch if you echo the bell it will make a beep noise so 0D you know the thing that aligns stuff to the left but my point is everything's under the 20 character so what we're going to do we're first we're going to use another um, we're going to use a register and we're going to use the SI register we're using the SI because SI is like BX the registers that could it's a register that can pretty much hold a lot of stuff we're going to put in there 200 or we're actually going to put in here 0 for now now we're going to move into um, BX 200 now we're going to jump to 110 this is going to be on A110. Now I gotta teach you something new. Mob A802 Mob DL. Now, see how this is at 200? Well, if I just call on BX, BX, which is this, which is storing the value starting at 200. Um, if I just call on BX, it's going to give me an error because BX and DL aren't compatible. They don't match. BL and B DL will match, but BX and B DL don't. Because this one holds single characters. This one could hold a whole bunch. So what we do, we put these around it. What this does is this will actually get the um the this actually gets the one, position of one byte at this area so if we put these around it now we're just going to get the first byte which is a y a capital y so now let's save this run it now type in test as you can see it's going to give us a capital y um because that's the first byte as starting at BX. So it's not getting us the whole string, it's just getting us the first byte. 
So that's what putting these box um, brackets around it does. It gets the first byte at the position of that register. Now if we put plus one, what this will do is get the second byte, the one right after it. So now if we run this again, we'll type in test, it will give us an O. Now if we like put 200 like the location, as you can see that will work as well. Um, so if you want you can use the location instead of BX, but I just like to use BX instead of the actual location because to me it just seems easier to work with instead of typing in 200 all the time. So we're just going to use BX. What we're going to do, we're going to use BX plus SI. Since SI is 0, BX plus 0 is going to be still, still the first byte, which is YO. What we're actually going to do, we're going to use the CL register, which is another register that can use for storing characters, and move into there this, the BX. Then what we're going to do, we're going to move in, or we're going to compare CL with um CL with 20 because remember I said all the values of those strange characters were under 20 so then if it jumped less than if it's less than 20 we're going to jump to 150 and if it's not we're just going to say um jump 110 and we're also right here going to say add SI1 so now what this is going to do it's going to move the byte at the location plus one it plus zero and it's going to move that byte into CL this will compare CL with 20 which is whoops which is right here and if it's anything less which is any of these then it's going to jump to 150 but if it's not it's going to add one to SI then jump to then um whoops yeah jump back to 110 so now it's going to do it's going to move into CI BX plus SI which since SI is, SI is now equal to 1 it's going to get us the second byte and then if that's not less than 20 it's going to get us the third byte and the fourth byte and the fifth until it finds one that's less than 20 and if it finds one to less than 20 it's going to jump to A150 then A150 we now know that BX plus SI is going to be the location of the end of our string and we know this because um, that's when it found, finally found one that was less than 20. So now what we're going to do, we're going to say mob into bx plus si, their string terminator, which is the dollar sign 24. Now we're going to say mob a809, mob dx200, int 21 and 20 now we're going to get an error when we run this it's going to be right here the reason is because we're trying to move this value into the location but it doesn't really know what the location is so what we're going to do we're going to write the word byte before it and that will specify that we're going you're getting the byte out of this location and that's what we're moving it into so now, now when we do this, it's not going to give us the error. So if we type in test, it's now going to say yo dog just fine. Because as a review, it moved, first I went ahead and just moved the location into BX, so it would be easier to write. If you want, you can write 200 every time instead of BX. And then what we do, we said SI was 0. Then we kept on looping through the string until we found um, a value that was less than 20. Then when we found one, we inserted a dollar sign there. And then we echoed the string. So remember how you got user input, but the user had to type a dollar sign? 
well this is how you could get user input and actually tag your dollar sign at the end in the next tutorial we're going to be getting console command line arguments and I'm going to show you how to do that and then you're going to need to tag a dollar sign at the end um, so that's it for this tutorial how tagging a dollar sign you can mix that with user input and like actually echo out user input without having the new line like I showed you at that other tutorial and that's it for this one